So it was, must've been four years on the job, three, four years on the job. Got on a SWAT team. I picked up detectives around five years. I was on detectives for three years. So I was doing SWAT and detective. And somewhere around like two or three years in detective, we were doing training. So I'm on a team now for four or five years. Um, and you're always, you know, running failure drills with gloves, because obviously we wear gloves. We're running training and freaking just everybody on you know, was doing a little swipe thing. You always got to come down and it's annoying. You come back on target and you try to get the little guy. And you know, so I can always smack yourself in the face and I just got sick of it. Either just I sucked at it or everybody just has the same problem I do. And it takes too much fine motor skills in the middle of something to be really fast and efficient and pay attention and process everything that you're doing. You know, you're kicking a door, you're moving, things are happening, you gotta be able to process. It's what's called that OODA loop. Um, and you just can't process when you gotta take your attention off for fine motor skills. Like you just need to be able to, you know, rip a failure. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, you can need like a side charge or some kind of thing, you know, better gross motor skills, ergonomics, and I can focus on the target. I don't have to think about doing any of this other stuff. So started looking around for some ideas and I saw those, you know, extended latches or whatever. So I put an extended latch on for a little bit. And then first time I transitioned to secondary, put it down over my mags, pulls it right out of battery. Gets caught on everything. I'm like, <laughs> that shit ain't happening. And then you notice that you put an overstress on it. So there's a huge chance to rip out a roll pin. I mean, you get a bigger guy that's strong, you probably just break that thing off. You know, those extended ones. Um, so needed something that didn't have that pressure on that roll pin, that failure thing. Cause I've actually, I've heard about that, you know, the roll pin breaks or the two sears off and then it's just flapping or it won't lock in, you know, then you have to deal with that. So, um, kept looking around, uh, obviously you're in law enforcement, like same thing in the military. You can't, you can't switch out like an upper and buy a dedicated side charger and put it on your department rifle. Like, no, bro. I mean, hand that shit into the armory and tell me how it goes. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I just kept looking, like nothing existed. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna freaking see if I can come up with something. So I started drawing, um, not to piss off my department. We did Saturday detectives, so I was alone on Saturdays. I'd sit there and think and draw, think and draw. Probably should be fucking working. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just drawing and drawing and drawing, trying to come up with ideas and you process it in your head to see if it'll actually work. You know, you're designing it in your head and trying to draw at the same time and it never looks the same, right? <laughs> so, uh, coming up with like the system on how the system would actually function to take pressure off, you know, to be able to swap out the charging handle to another system, you know, make it self disengaging, take pressure off the roll pin, Make sure there's no overforce on it. Make sure it's on the proper ergonomics. Make sure the thing's field strippable. Make sure you have all these specific things that you need that are all gross motor skills, but also applicable to, you know, being out in the field outside the wire. You know, you're in a house, you got something, you can, you got to strip your gun down. You need to be able to field strip that and put it back together. But then also have, maybe let's throw in an additional, have a secondary backup to your charger. So now you didn't just have a SAR charger, you still have your standard operation. So, and then make this thing all work around optics and setups and everything else. So you can run it one handed off of, you know, door frame off a shield or put it on whatever. You can run it bilateral, switch into different hands. You know, it all had to work around everything that I could possibly think of that would come up in a situation and make it interchangeable too between all guns. So you just drop it on a gun, you're good to go. Um, so like, I almost remember it was one day it was a Saturday detective, freaking just hit me. like. This is how I make it. <laughs> Drew it all up. I called my buddy up um, that was on the road. It's out, dude. <laughs> like, and he can run a gun with the best of them. So he come in. I was like, what do you think? What do you think? You know, so I thought it was a solid idea. Uh, went to another guy on the SWAT team who was actually in a unit with my best friend growing up in the Marines. Um, and I knew he had a family that has a machine shop. So I was like, do you think we can make, can hook me up with them, get one made up. So went down, started freaking getting it all set up, getting them made up. And he's actually the one that decided to, like, this might be something legit. 
But uh, let's see if we can make this. Like for real, sell it. That's what you think. <laughs> and uh, yeah, next thing you know, freaking uh, him and I teamed up. Uh, we became co-founders of Devil Dog Concepts and started developing the hard charger and here we are. Hey, thanks for tuning in Devil Dog Concepts. Check us out on all social media platforms. Check out all our videos, our side charge and handle system that's out. Um, as you can see, we're on set right now, shooting the uh, HC-10. It's the uh, side charging handle system for the AR-10 308 rifle platform. Uh, it's gonna be a big hit. Also check out, coming out soon, is the uh, videos for the Ruger SF-AR 308, the hard charger side charging handle system. Works on that just fine. Appreciate it, y'all. God bless.